Well, so we just arrived at the racetrack playa. I'm here with Chris. No one else around, apart from a few rangers sitting on the fence. Yeah. And we are ready for lunch. So this is the first highlight of the trip. We're gonna go here, Chris. We have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, Jeff, Smuckers, uh, brought my knife, plates, King's Hawaiian bread, best thing ever. Very, very good for you. Uh, tastes good compared to... Well, that's the American lunch. This is a European lunch. Right. Which is seaweed, that's the base, typical for sushi. Then we have uh, baba ganoush, which is yeah. like an eggplant sauce, typical from Greece. And then we have smoked salmon. Chris thinks that it's a raw salmon, but it's actually smoked, yeah. and you can eat it safely. And yeah, so which one do you prefer? Let me just tell you something. Try it, try it. This, this will not put you in the hospital. <laughs> that will put you in the <laughs> hospital. So that Dolomiti rock is called the rock nursery. Basically all the rocks are falling from those mountains here into the playa or the dry lake. And they fall here and they leave all the tracks. So hi and welcome to the racetrack playa. We finally made it here. It was a relatively long drive, but it was it wasn't that bad, right? No. It was fine. Uh, this is the playa or the dry lake with the moving rocks or the sliding rocks. Uh, these rocks are usually of the theory is that uh, when this uh, dry lake gets flooded in the winter and, and the wind is blowing, it pushes the rocks, leaving these uh, beautiful tracks. And we're also one of the best places for doing astro in Death Valley and actually in North America. Uh, this is a border one, so there's literally no light pollution in miles and miles. And the goal is to photograph the moving rocks with Orion tonight and with the Milky Way later. So still a little bit cloudy, but the forecast is positive, so we hope we can do something at uh, dawn later. Um, we'll be scouting now, trying to find these beautiful leading lines, beautiful rocks. I was here three years ago and it was a very night session, but I didn't have an astro modified camera and I didn't know what I know now. So I'm looking forward to this. It's Chris, first time. Yep. Excited? First time ever. We found a rock. We found a rock. Maybe you'll stop yet. You should just stay here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the goal is to scout. It's a big playa. It's about four miles uh, each direction. So it's going to take some time, but we'll do like a small area where we can find some rocks. So yeah, let's get into it. So I think we found a very cool spot with rocks. Okay. Here we have a double track facing facing west for Orion. And on the other side, we have these two rocks with huge tracks, perfect for the Milky Way core on top. So we can do a panel here. And also we can do single frames for the Milky Way in that direction. So this rock, especially this one here, is super nice. Yeah, so this little line is perfect according to photo pills. And here we can get the little line of the rock and the Milky Way is gonna be right there in the right spot around 420. Yep. And also we have different compositions here for Orion. So we can do a panel having this track. When we do a panel, it can look like a rounded line to mimic the sky here. So that can turn out pretty good. And even for a 360, having these two tracks, we'll see, a lot of choices here. I had the privilege today of reading with uh, Chris Lam, one of the original founders um, of the Kickstarter of Ventral Polaris. Founder member. 
founder member for real. Uh, Chris is backer number 16, one six. So it's Chris Lamb, also known as backer number 16. Um, we have to say that I got into event row because of Chris. So he is uh, he's to blame about all the frustrations I had with Abendro. But I got into first. I got into to using Abendro because of you. You know. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, it's a nice story. It, it is. Um, yeah, but the thing is that the first unit I saw about the Abendro Polaris was yours, and that was in 2022. Yeah, Utah workshop. Yeah, I remember everybody was in the room bringing the gear, different. I up front, move you move, the Sky Watchers. All of a sudden, it's Chris Lamb. First time I met him. And he says, look, I have a Bendro Polaris. And I said, what? And I, I knew the Polaris because uh, some people in the newsletter told me, Dan, this is going to be amazing. You should support the Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to do automatic panels, automatic everything. Yeah. And yeah. I said, well, I don't trust this until I don't see it. And yes, I saw it. I remember the first night you were showing me how to yeah. do the Polar alignment, uh, tracking the first shot for four minutes with yeah. pinpointing stars. And that's when I said, Wow, this is incredible. Yeah. I had to, you know, get a new See, when I before I showed up, I was like, I really gotta get my I gotta get my stuff in order. So I like set yeah. it up a thousand times in my basement because I'm like, Dan's gonna see this. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I better know what I'm doing. So yeah, it worked it worked great. I couldn't believe it. I've been super, super happy with it. And as soon as I go back, yeah, I got the Bendro order, they ship it a few a couple of months later. And uh, but everything uh, my feeling was that there was like no information about how to get it started. Yep. I remember being in touch with you, like, yeah, yeah, you can double tap here, you can change this, but there was no actual information anywhere. And two years later, we're still kind of in the same place. Uh, it's yeah. good that there are some communities like the uh, Facebook group, the uh, yeah. Telegram group, things like yep. that, that yep. people support. But still, there's a lot of lack of information yeah. and, and things like that. Yep. In my experience, yeah, it's uh, the learning curve to use this tracker is much steeper yeah. compared to a um, Skywatcher or Ioptron, which is mechanical, and you just you know plug it and make it work. Yep. With this tracker, the yeah, learning curve is steeper. Uh, you can have especially connection problems uh, with the camera, with the app, and then problems in the field, you know. But there's a lot of trial and error, like putting the time. Yeah. And trying different things until you get with the key, you know, yeah. because yeah. But I have to say, I mean, the reason why I got it is because it just felt so right for the time. It was like, you know, the app allowed you to drive it. Um, you know, at first, the, the idea of pl unplugging the camera and using the camera, you know, to do all of its stuff while it was still tracking was mm -hmm. what I did. And then it just kind of came to the point where, you know what, you just have to use the app for the way it was intended. And you eventually, once you start doing more and more of it, it just becomes more natural. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's such a great unit. I really love it. Yeah, and for me, it's about the, because I travel a lot. Yeah. I travel like nine, 10 months a yeah. year. And with the Ultron, I was carrying all these huge, yeah. you know, yeah. like novelist yeah. lights, L bracket, yeah. and it was like a lot of gear, right. weight. And for me, this is super compact. Yeah. So last year, when I was in New Zealand, Australia, these places, this fits super nice in my camera bag. I can take it anywhere, yeah. plug it, boom, you know, it's done. So yeah. that for me is a seller. It's, super light portable yeah, yeah and also about tracking panels you know because yeah. i'm really into panoramas so i that. thought you were really into going to bed and sleeping <laughs> you know <laughs> it's a, I, yeah, it's the session, yeah back in the car i'll see you later <laughs> yeah okay so one of the questions chris bendro is <laughs> astro cheating or not <laughs> it's not it's the way life should be with your with your star tracker <laughs> yeah and if not yeah Fix it in post. Fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice game from Chris, so thank you for that. Because yeah, a very, very limited edition uh, on that, I have to say. I have to credit you and uh, my brother-in-law for those two sayings, and they've been... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did um, this baptism of the uh, term Astro Cheating after the Utah workshop, yeah. because it yeah. really felt like cheating. Yeah. Like, leaving your tracker, doing everything for you, and yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. It, and it was amazing. For me, it's been so changed, you know, the change has been drastic in the last year. Uh, I've been doing mostly two setups, you know, two shooting with yeah. two setups, and the Bendro can do the sky, oh. and I can do my foreground at the same time. Yeah. And I noticed that my foregrounds improved drastically in the last year. Yeah. Because I don't have to worry about the sky, you know. I set up my sky, do it, focus on the foreground. Yeah. And for me, that was incredible, you know, having the ability to just go to sleep or do your <laughs> foreground or do whatever you like. It feels like cheating. That's yeah. real. Yeah. yeah. Well. Hence the word that you came up with. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's a good <laughs> word. It is, it is. 
But uh, no, it's a good unit. I think, you know, like in technology, it's like you get certain things that change drastically overnight. And <laughs> the one reason why I was like fearful of like, you know, astrophotography was was the whole concept of like, you know, using a tracker. And yeah. it, it freaked me out. You know, it was like all this alignment stuff and, you know, getting it all right and lasers and all that stuff. And at the end of the day, I was like, this is the right time, you know, for me. Yeah. And it really, really has like changed the way I kind of like go out and do what I do. At yeah. Night. And I love it. And what do you recommend to people starting now that they are freaking out about the band roll? Like, oh, this doesn't connect, doesn't work. I just want to sell it on Facebook to my friends. Yeah. Uh, so what it, do you recommend to it, those people? It's like a lot of things. Like there are certain sports that people like try once and they hate it. And, yeah. and you know, I just say you got to go five times, you know, it's like you've got to use this thing for like five nights. 10 nights, whatever, and then make a decision, but keep trying. And all you have to do is just find a controlled space, go in your basement for like a couple of hours, act like the radiator over there is like the polar alignment star, whatever, and just try it and continually yeah. do it. Hit every button, find out what every button does. And absent the manual, which I totally agree is a big issue, but you know, at the end of the day, you just got to fuss around with the thing. You just do. You know? Yeah. No, I understand it, you know, because it's such a bear because everybody looks at all the things that it does, you know, the automated panos, you know, yeah. all that stuff. And they think that it's so easy until you get out in the middle of the field and it's two in the morning and it's 32 degrees. Yeah. And you're like, why can't I make this thing do it? Well, it's because you just need to take time before you get out in the field. And yeah. That's really the biggest issue. And that's what I tell people always. Make sure you yeah. put the hours before and yeah. don't don't try the band draw for the first time or second time, even third time with an important session. Yeah. If right. it's important, make sure you have another tracker, which is more reliable yeah. for you or whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. Uh, once you are comfortable with your Bendro, then you can go anywhere. Yep. And because uh, you'll learn a lot of problem solving. Like now I can tell, I can tell you the 10, 15 more common issues. Yeah. And as soon as I see them is I know what to do. Yeah. So I'll restart my phone, restart the tracker, change the cable here. And you know, that fixes most of the things. Yeah. And that's my other experience is that, you know, with all the workshops, I can tell that about 90% of the errors are human errors, yeah. you know, with a Bendro. Yeah. That, yeah, there's yeah. certainly some mechanical software yeah. problems that Bendro has to fix. Yeah. But I would say that about 90% are still human errors. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you 100%. Well, so ready for tonight? Yes. So tonight we have... Hit the button, go back to the truck. Yeah. <laughs> tonight we have an exciting night ahead. So between hopefully Orion, if it clears up, right now it's a little bit cloudy. Uh, later, the Milky Way core is supposed to be cleared up. Uh, and yeah, plan is to set out the two bendros, track the sky, foregrounds, doing everything. It's gonna be a busy night ahead. It's an amazing location. It's an amazing location. There's no one around. We're alone here. Yeah. Uh, we see only one person <laughs> in the entire day, I think, <laughs> which is great. Um, but yeah, no, thanks for the talk, Chris. And My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, let's get later to shoot and yeah, we'll yeah. see what we capture. I will see you later. I will see you later. I will <laughs> see you now. <laughs> Well, so we just started shooting uh, first shots in the racetrack playa, and it's looking absolutely amazing. Uh, clear skies, uh, beautiful uh, stars with no light pollution, and I think it's looking great. How's it looking? Fantastic. I've never shot in conditions like this. This is amazing. Just outstanding. Yeah, I think it's by far the best place in Death Valley, and probably one of the best places in all North America, I would say, because it's just incredible. Uh, so we have both Ventro Polaris working now. They've been working fine so far, uh, taking the first images. I do a first panel, it's still very low. So I'm gonna go now for the second. Uh, and Chris, you're doing single frames? So. Yeah, single frames. I pushed it all the way to three minutes and absolutely no trailing. I, yeah. Just, I'm blown away. Yeah, and we'll put that <laughs> later over there so yeah. you can see the detail. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was three minutes. Three minutes, uh, ISO. Uh, like maybe 340 maybe? No, I was looking at the colors and the details and it looks insane. Looks yeah. Insane, yeah. I've never seen it like that. Well, so we're going to be busy here the entire night. Uh, we'll catch up later at the end of the video, but yeah, it looks very, very promising. All right, so we're done with the night. It's been a long day, long night, but everything was perfect. Uh, we missed Orion because it was cloudy, yep. but the Milky Way core was stunning. Uh, uh, unbelievable. 
Yes, I mean, images in the back of the camera are looking great. Uh, we're looking at Chris' uh, Canon shots and they're looking spectacular. A lot of detail, color. Uh, the arch was beautiful in the sky. And yeah, we got some nice foregrounds. I don't, think, I don't think it could have been any better. Yeah, no, we couldn't. Uh, we got a nice uh, foreground with a panel for a panel with a with a track on the rocks, and we also got another one with a little line. I think they're gonna turn out great. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I might not go to bed. Yeah, well, no, it's blue hour already, and probably driving back to the. Not to mention the three hours that we have to drive <laughs> home. <laughs> Driving back to civilization, but it's been an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, Chris? Are we going to get back here? I'm going to be back. Yeah. Might have to rent the helicopter to get here quicker. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, you want to learn more about how to use these toys. Make sure you check the Bendro Polaris course. Uh, check out Chris's uh, work. I'm going to leave here his Instagram and all his work. And yeah, like, subscribe, and you want to keep checking more videos. Yeah, just watch the channel. See you next time. Bye-bye.